morning. We are on day 36 of the Red Letter Challenge. Four more days to go to finish uh, this challenge up, and hopefully that's not going to be the end of uh, uh, your or my work with this book and what we've learned along the way. Uh, we've got some very good information and some good practices and uh, some good direction on how to uh, better uh, connect with our Lord, and then by that, connecting others to Him as well. Sorry for the sound of my voice this morning. I'm suffering with a little bit of a sinus condition here. Uh, I'll try not to sniffle. If I do, forgive me. Uh, I'll try to catch it and mute it so you uh, may see my nose go up, but you won't hear any of those dreadful sounds. So, Anyway, welcome and glad to have you here today. Thank you for uh, joining us. We're going to be looking at Acts 1, and also we got a segment of Exodus 4, 10 through 12 we're going to take a look at too, as we look at this concept of, of going, and uh, as we go, right, uh, to uh, share the message of Christ, as it says in here from Acts 1, 8, right? But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Good morning, Fred and Renee, glad to have you here. I'm not sure if Rick's there with you as well, but hey, I'll bet Elaine's there uh, keeping an eye on you, Fred. So glad to have you all here today. Again, looking at Acts 1, uh, verse 8 as our, uh, our target verse. And again, also going to be looking at Exodus 4, 10 through 12. Uh, Moses is going to give a few reasons why he shouldn't be going on uh, any kind of a mission, uh, certainly not to Pharaoh anyway. And I'll bet uh, we've all had those times in our life too, though, right? We, we kind of felt a calling. Um, um, an idea that God was wanting us to go and do something and we just kept dragging our feet and dragging our feet and uh, kind of thinking maybe somebody else will get there, right? And if we know anything about our God, though, he, he keeps applying the pressure, doesn't he? And uh, he will bring us uh, into that wonderful mission field. Uh, and sometimes it's a, it's a struggle for us. And I know for myself, uh, when I was uh, well back uh, over in Michigan, was going to Messiah Lutheran Church over in a little town called Clio, Michigan. And uh, we had a, a very large congregation, and our pastor was mission-minded, just as ours are here. Uh, and we started doing um, an evangelism program. Uh, what really impressed me about the evangelism program is we didn't just get the information and run out and start doing it. We spent, I'd say, the first two months uh, of just solidly working, going over the material, memorizing the material, and then practicing it on each other. Actually knocking on a door, going in, sitting down, uh, and actually even made some calls at each other's houses along the way. And when we finally got in front of people who may not have heard the gospel message or we were there to because they uh, visited our church, whatever the circumstances were, uh, it was amazing how much easier it was uh, than I imagined it would have been if we had just gone out cold uh, calling uh, without any kind of practice at all. And that's kind of what ours is about today. Uh, you know, if, you, if you've got your book open uh, and you're on that, you know, write down your testimony. Now, again, some people have trouble with that word testimony. Uh, we've probably heard those people that have a testimony that makes you go, I, I, I had a parking ticket once, does that count? I mean, you know, because the, the stuff that they're laying out there, uh, you know, is uh, some heavy-duty stuff. Um, not everybody has heavy-duty stuff in their life. I mean, we got some. But, you know, some of the people, if it's a drug addiction, if it's a, a life of crime, a life of violence, uh, a, a life of, of hurt and harm that's gone on extensively, and then God brings that person around, uh, their, their testimony is going to be probably a little bit different than ours. But it's okay. Because really, as, and I like this too, is a couple of questions if you're struggling. What has God done for you? Wow. Can we talk about that all day or what? What has he done? Right? He has done everything for me up to and including the great gift of sending his son Jesus Christ to die for me as he did for you right and I mean beyond that I mean where do you start I mean that's the, the greatest gift ever but just look at all around us we got the all of our family even our dysfunctional families uh, you know some people don't even have those uh, they, they, they have don't even an idea who their mom and dad are they grew up in care all of their life and uh, they don't have that stability and uh, so there's a lot of things going on that God does that just is a blessing to us. The food that we have, our health, and even if our health is deteriorating, you know, a lot of us come into this world fairly healthy and, and for most of our life doing pretty good. And then as we get older or certain things happen, of course, our life changes. But 
that doesn't mean that God gave up on us. That doesn't mean that God was punishing us. And we'll read about that in just a moment in Exodus as well, too. And then the other question uh, to, to consider is, what difference has God made in your life? Again, <laughs> where, where do you start? Where do you stop? I mean, my wife, my children, my job, uh, being here, uh, you know, right here at Mount Olive. What a wonderful place that God has led my wife and uh, myself here to. Uh, 51 years of blessed marriage. Uh, first 35 years a little bit rough, as we like to joke around, but uh, the last 15, 16 have just been great. Uh, and, uh, you know, anyways, it's that idea, right, that, that we, we have been blessed with so many things. And so that ability to really take a look, you know, that, that confidence that God's going to hear your prayers, that when you go to him in prayer, it's not a question of whether he's going to hear you. It's just, you know, what's that answer going to look like and how quickly will it get here? Uh, and sometimes it gets right, right there. Sometimes it takes a while, but we have that confidence to know that God is with us. And again, glad to have everybody here, Greg and Betty Ann and Edward and all the others. Uh, Karen, good to have you here as well. If I missed any of the names, I do apologize. I just look over the screen once in a while. Uh, and I can't watch that screen over there because it's uh, got about a seven-second delay. So it, it can be a little confusing to uh, this old mind right here. But the idea here, right, is Jesus has told us, right, that we're going to be his witnesses. And again, his witnesses. And the main thrust of the story is always going to be about Jesus. We don't have to you know, bog people down with uh, the, all the dysfunctionality of our lives. I mean, sometimes in a certain situation, if somebody's dealing with a, some kind of a particular problem that you've dealt with, and, and God has worked in and through you and brought you through that mess, you, know, you can give some insight into what's going on, but you don't have to share everything. It doesn't matter what it is. If you've been through it, you can share what God has revealed to you. And in so doing, help them to understand that, yeah, my, my life's a mess right now too, but you know what? Look, well, look what he did in, in Deacon Ray's life. And if he can work through a mess like that, mine will be a piece of cake, right? And, and that's that idea. We want them to know that God has worked in our life. But again, we don't have to lay out every sort of detail of everything that we did throughout our entire life. You know, the very fact that we were born into this world sinful and unclean and having no hope of salvation and God rescued us by the blood of his son, I mean, there, there's a good starting point. You know, we don't have to exaggerate. We don't have to build up. We don't have to be in some kind of a contest with somebody uh, to tell how much our life was so much worse than theirs and they just don't know. It, it's none of that because that's not going to bring a person to faith. It's the power of the gospel. It's the power of Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. We saw that in the thief on the cross who came to faith in that time. You know, just a little bit before that, railing against Jesus just like the other thief was. And something in that moment, the Holy Spirit brought him to faith. And that instant recognition of who Jesus was and his words of, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. And Jesus says, today I tell you, you will be with me in paradise. And what a, what a wonderful thing. Right? But that's where the power of the message is. It's not in having some great testimony that, uh, you, know, the, you know, rags to riches and all that other stuff. It, it's just about being human beings and the mistakes that we've made and the people that we've hurt, if we're going to share some of that. But again, you don't have to give away all the details. Uh, just that willingness to, to be open and honest that you're not perfect, that you need a Savior and that he is working in your life and you even struggle as a Christian that you have those days, those times, those moments where you do the things that you wish you wouldn't do, just like Paul writes about, right? In Romans 8, he talks about the things that he uh, does that, that he doesn't want to do and the things that he wants to do that he doesn't do and, and that struggle, right? And then that great declaration, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, right? And that is the message. That's the testimony. That is, uh, if, 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 if that's all you presented, was that part right there, you know, as, as a summation of your own life, you've hit the nail on the head. You don't have to exaggerate again, as I said before. You don't have to build it up to some great big, you know, catastrophe. And Because we come into this world in a catastrophe. <laughs> I mean, think about it, right? We come into this world on the side of Satan. We come into this world as sinful human beings. God's grace, his mercy brings us from death to life. What a great message to share with those around you, especially if they're going through struggles and, and hurt and pain and loss and, and all these other things, and, and then you come there with that beautiful light, the light of the gospel, and wonderful, wonderful news, right, to share with other people. 
So again, take some time. Write down your testimony. And the other thing, uh, and practice it with your family. Be willing to, uh, to, to just practice. You know, my wife and I were talking about this last night, and, and she says, what's your testimony? And, and I kind of stammered and stuttered, and, uh, you know, it, it, as, as I told her, I says, you know, it's really, it's like telling a comedian to be funny sometimes, right? Asking them to tell you a joke or do something humorous, and it's not always possible in that moment. But if I'm sitting down across from somebody, and it's a conversation, that testimony comes, again, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as you go through these things and as you practice them, you're going to find out that pretty soon what used to be very, very uncomfortable to you becomes as natural as breathing. In fact, I find talking about Jesus and what he has done for me and things like that uh, something that I would rather do most any time than to talk about you know, this football team or that baseball team or whatever the circumstances are or even the troubles in my life. I'd rather talk about what Jesus has done for me. And again, not running away from the fact that we have problems in our life. Where's my focus? Is it going to be on the problems that I have or the one who comes to bring salvation to me? And that's what we want to kind of help other people learn how to do too. Now I said I was going to bring in Exodus uh, 4, 10 through 12 because, you know, Moses, uh, famously, we know the story of Moses, right? God tells him to go to Pharaoh and he says, well, he says this. Moses says, oh, my Lord, uh, I am not eloquent either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and of tongue. Now think about that. He's saying, Lord, even in my conversation with you, you have not miraculously healed me. I'm still doing this stuttering thing, and, and I feel awkward, and, and I'm kind of, you know, I can't go in front of the Pharaoh for crying out loud. Uh, I, I start stuttering on one word. He, he might think I'm trying to kill him or something, you know, and off with my head and all the other stuff. I, again, right? We don't know, but his point is this. Lord, find somebody else. Send somebody else to do this. I'm not fit for the job. And then God says this, Then the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute, or deaf, or seen, or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth, and teach you what you shall speak. Boy, wouldn't that be wonderful if it, the, the, the story turned right there, and Moses phew, charged off? If you read a little bit further, he says, But Lord, right? But Lord, you don't seem to understand. And so... <laughs> What does God do? Yeah. He sends his brother Aaron with him. Right? Aaron's got the smooth speech. He's going to send him along. But that was not God's gift. And I think that Moses really missed out on a great thing, that one of two things would happen, that even in his stuttering, he would have delivered the message that God sent, or maybe God would have healed his stuttering in the moment and maybe for the rest of his life. We don't know what blessings he missed out on. But we do know this. He went. You know, even if Aaron was by his side. Just like uh, you know, Jonah, uh, he ran away. God gets him where he wants him to be. And, and again, you and I, right? We can run for a while, but we're eventually going to be there. And what are the blessings that we miss out when we don't avail ourselves to uh, following God? Yes, there are going to be struggles. There's going to be uh, indecision. There's going to be all kinds of awkwardness and stuff like that. But you know what? That's okay. I do that every day. I mean, think about it. Every day, does every word come out of your mouth exactly the way you want it to? No. But somehow when we start speaking about Jesus, we feel that it should just flow just as natural and as smooth. And it can with a rehearsed canned speech. But our Lord really likes to work through us, right? Be prepared. Have a, a reason for the hope that's in you. And then go. That's the direction, again, we get from Paul, right? Always being ready to explain the gospel in season and out of season. And that's what our God calls us to do. And so, we're going to end here. I thank everybody who has joined us today. I pray that you would be uh, blessed in this day and that you would be a blessing to those around you uh, as you get opportunity. Write down your testimony. Practice a little bit sharing the wonderful message of salvation through Jesus Christ. For he is our Lord and Savior. And he is worthy of all praise and all glory. And all I can say to that is amen. Have a great day in the Lord.